Hello ladies and gentlemen, this game is from 1998 and with the white pieces GM Anatoly Karpov versus a class uh, A play, actually an expert named Christopher William. And this took place in the uh, in New Jersey. So D4, G6, C4, Bishop G7, so we have some kind of modern defense, right? Knight C3, C5, some people call this the sniper, D5, and then Bishop takes C3, and B takes C3 and F5, so this looks weird, right? Now, this is known as the uh, Genji Indian defense. Um, named after uh, Grandmaster uh, Roman Genji Kashvili. Um, and it also looks like an opening called the Clarendon Court uh, Variation. Alright. So, the idea behind this this move right here, uh, F5, alright, is to kind of delay or stop White primarily from playing this move... Uh, e4 okay and then black wants to use his pair of knights okay to um dominate this kind of uh blocked uh pawn structure so you have ideas kind of like mixed together from like the dutch defense and nimzo indian like with these double pawns and by keeping the positions kind of blocked up um black hopes to um make this position more conducive uh, to the use of knights than white's bishop here all right so black usually tries to keep the position kind of closed and dominate the position uh with his knights so as you can see he gives up his bishop prayer real early um and this is like an awkward uh, looking position and i want to show this game because it's interesting uh how uh karpov uh dealt with this Karpov played h4, and this is one of the main um, um, ideas of attacking black here, is basically the simple idea, h4, h5, capturing here, and of course the rook is unprotected, there's no bishop on g7, alright, d6, h5, and now queen a5, so black, you know, probably watch the DVD or something. He knows he knows what's going on. So he, he sets a little trap for Karpov here. So by playing Queen A5, of course, you can see the um, the uh, C pawn is challenged. And so uh, the idea here um, is that if White plays, you know, H takes G6 going after this Rook. H takes G6. Rook takes H8. Then... The queen check comes into play. Then after bishop d2, then just simply queen h8. And black has uh, stolen the pawn. So that's the idea uh, behind that move right there. So after queen a5, of course, Karpov sees what's going on. And he just simply uh, plays the move uh, bishop d2. Okay. Now... One of Black's ideas in this position is to make this maneuver to f6 with the knight and then eventually come in with e4. Now, this is not a big deal for White because he can always kick that knight out uh, with f3. Okay? And then, if the knight captures the dark square bishop, well, it's good for White because this bishop is not really a fantastic piece anyway. I mean, look at his job. It's just guarding the C3 pawn. Alright, so um, that's some of the ideas uh, in the position right there. So after Bishop D2, Black took, and then Karpov, Karpov played Knight H3. Okay, and uh, I like how Karpov just continues to develop his pieces here. He doesn't worry about going after weak pawns, so that's something that we can take as a, a lesson. Right, not being so greedy to capture uh, back material, especially when the uh, you know pawns are weak anyway. 
So in this position, if rook takes h5, then knight f6, gaining a temp tempo against the rook, rook h1, rook uh, h1, and then for example, knight bd7. And with the idea of this knight coming to e5, that's good. You know, that's good for black. You know, as far as like activity is concerned. All right, he's able to gain all all types of uh, time. So instead of just capturing the pawn and being thirsty. Karpov just continues to develop and plays knight h3. Knight f6. Knight f4. And continuing to improve the position. Knight bd7 here. Karpov continues his development with e3. And now black plays knight to e5. Okay, so you can see Black's ideas with, with uh, surrounding these knights and keeping the position, uh, you know, blocked up. So White's bishop here is not really um, effective at this point. I just want you to see that if Black plays knight e4 here, then this pawn right here is hanging in. Um, then um, uh, White will end up checkmating Black. So, for instance, king d8, knight e6, mate. And if king f8, again, knight e6, leading to mate. All right. So, it's important right now for black to keep that knight on f6. So, knight e5 was played. Now Karpov captures the pawn, knight takes. And here, black finally starts to crack a little bit under pressure and plays knight takes h5, which brings the queen to that diagonal. Better here, this play is knight e4, because now the knight is blocking the h5 square, so there will be no knight e6 or, or queen to uh, h5 check. So a move like knight e4, f3, knight takes, queen takes, as we discussed before, or king takes, it's possible. Um, you know, it's an interesting uh, continuation also, and uh, it doesn't look too bad uh, for black at this at this point. Okay, so after knight e5 was played. Knight takes h5, and knight takes h5 was played instead. This brings the queen in the vicinity of the king, and queen takes h5 was played. Black compounds his uh, previous error and plays another um, weak move in knight g6. Now, the best move was just to move the king out of the way, for instance, with king d8. All right, instead of uh, entering uh, into another another pin, then of course black could continue. Uh, excuse me, white can continue with moves like queen g5, or even just bishop e2. All right. So now what happens after queen takes h5 check, knight g6, the knight is now in a dangerous pinning situation. Karpov plays in typical Karpovian fashion with the move f4 and what f4 does is it just kills this bishop right here first of all from from ever coming out on this uh, c8 to h3 diagonal and also it takes away outposts in the future for this knight once this knight is able to move all right so just with one move uh you know, Karpov, you know, just uh, decimated the black uh, position right there, uh, positionally, all right? Um, furthermore, we talked about the bishops uh, not being felt yet. So now at this point, Karpov is preparing simply bishop d3 and following up with g4. 
notice how these moves open the position and then you can see the vulnerability of this rook right here so this pin situation is dangerous all right so finally black woke up and said i need to play king d8 and get out of this pin the problem is is that time is very important in chess and uh you know he wish he wishes he could have done that you know a move uh before all right now Karpov went with his plan bishop d3 bishop d7 and now of course Karpov could just play bishop takes f5 here but he finds the stronger move g4 all right he continues um along with his plan all right and now he's threatening to uh play g takes f5 uh himself black plays bishop e8 and karpov simply just captures the pawn queen takes f5 knight e5 all right and this is based on a a, a tactical uh trick but it's uh um, you know it's, it's flawed and the idea that black had is uh to basically win the piece back by playing bishop uh, to g6 so after f takes e5 bishop g6 and just simply queen takes g6 uh, from Karpov and he won the game the idea is of course if h takes g6 then just simply rook takes h8 king c7 and then either rook takes a8 or e takes d6 first which is probably technically correct since you're not just dropping this pawn. So e takes d6, e takes, and then rook takes. And then you have two rooks and two bishops versus a lone queen and king. And uh, black is uh, dead lost. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that game uh, from Anatoly Karpov versus an a expert uh, player. Um, it was an interesting opening. Uh, that's why I wanted to show show the game this uh uh, Genji, uh Indian uh, defense uh, had a little bit of popularity around uh, you know the early 2000s uh, late 90s for a little while there's a few uh, grandmaster games um, in that variation but you saw a model game of play against it by Karpov although Black did make uh, some uh, silly mistakes so um, just remember that uh, you know unorthodox openings uh, you know can always be met you know with like sound classical play Karpov didn't do anything spectacular to refute Black's opening but he just simply uh, you know took it one step at a time and just uh, played a uh, simple chess and wind up uh, overcoming um, his opponent in the position all right um, another thing uh, I want to say is uh, please like and subscribe donate uh, to my channel if you can and also check the links below for DVDs, um, which are usually related to whatever opening was uh, presented on the board today. So with that, I will see you guys on the next video.